Welcome to our topic film providing some amazing features of the Sundew family using many detailed pictures. At last, after almost three years, now we made it. We investigated and grew selected plants in our greenhouse to examine them with macro lens and microscope with regard to a phenomenon which, astonishingly enough, has been overseen in the past by most of the experts and amateur enthusiasts for its frequent occurrence. We found snap tentacles a fitting name for this phenomenon. So what is a snap tentacle? Let us drastically simplify the subject. Most people know the typical drosula tentacles producing mucilage drops. They have about the shape of this egg whisk. The outer leaf margin of many species, however, show additional tentacles without mucilage, which look more like this shovel carrying a jelly pad. Those are the snap tentacles we examined. The name is assigned for their ability to snap in towards the lamina more or less rapidly. However, even when touched, many snap tentacles do not always move, or frequently with delay, and their speed depends on the species, its condition and the temperature. Actually, on this DVD we are pleased to show you the fastest sun you on Earth in action, and in detail for the first time. Another simplification is necessary in order to clarify matters to those who are less interested in the scientific aspects. We therefore relate the Drosera species only to their sections and do so without using the correct further botanical division into subgenus and so forth. Those details are irrelevant for our examinations and, by the way, even change over the years. Another subject is the yellow emergences of Drosera hartmeierorum, which are also modified glue tentacles. Meanwhile, we are relatively sure that we were able to clarify their function and show these surprising details also for the first time. As in our past DVDs, we decided to pronounce all botanical names as they are in Latin. Some literature quoted on this DVD is strictly covered by German laws of recitation and actually, in the case of the books from the Australian author Alan Laurie, we received his personal permission to quote him when we were filming in his house in Perth 1991 and 95. Hello, my name is Alan Lowry, the author of Carnivorous Plants of Australia Volume 1 and Volume 2. And I'm happy to report that I have in front of me the completed manuscript for Volume 3. We've had a few delays with the University Press of Western Australia, mainly through... We did not make use of that until now, but the permission given is still valid. Thank you. Contrary to some rumours circulating, which we even found also on the internet, we would like to clearly declare at this juncture that it was not us who brought Drosera hartmeierorum into worldwide horticulture in 2001. This had already been effected between 1996 and 98 by Alan Laurie, the Australian who collected the seeds of this species at its habitat and sold them worldwide as Drosera indica red. Obviously, he did not recognize the actual difference of this plant and also overlooked the snap tentacles on many Drosseras that he describes in his books, as even the drawings show a lack of them. In the year 2000, the plants with the yellow tentacles in the center could already be found worldwide. Grown, for example, in Brazil by Fernando Rivadavia, in America, as the great photos by Barry Rice show, and indeed since 1998 
the species has thrived magnificently beside other growers in Christian Klein's greenhouse in the town of Merzig in Germany. However, only in the year 2001, when the species was already spread worldwide, Irmgard and I discovered its unique details at the site of growth in Australia, when we filmed it and recognized the amazing details through our macro lens. Furthermore, and again contrary to circulating rumors, not Irmgard and I who made the botanical descriptions and named the plant, but rather Dr. Jan Schlauer. So your motto should always be, take only pictures, leave only footsteps. Well, after having cleared that up, it's time to sit back and enjoy our film on the fascinating genus Drosera, providing several surprises. Snap, 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 and tackles. Snap and tackle and run me lights. Snap and tackle and run me lights. Snap, snap, snap and tackle. In 1994, we filmed Drosera burmani in our greenhouse to record the rapid movement of its elongated marginal tentacles. A well-known phenomenon, even 12 years ago, reported to be similar to Drosera sessilifolia. Wondering about those snap tentacles without mucilage, we surprisingly found some more sundews standing just next to them. However, fully occupied with our movie, we paid no further attention to it, at least until we received a VHS video by Richard Davian in 2003, which brought the rapid tentacles back to mind. Now it was Drosera glanduligera, which grows naturally near Richard's property in Adelaide, South Australia. For almost 25 years, he tried to convince other CP enthusiasts that the elongated tentacles of this species need only fractional parts of a second for snapping. 1995 and 99, he even published articles on the subject in Flytrap News, mentioning also the movement of some pygmy droseras. This proved to be in vain, because obviously other CP enthusiasts either ignored or did not believe him, until we showed his recordings on our DVD, A Hunting Wedges Cocktail, and investigated the phenomenon more exactly with macro lens and USB microscope. Therefore, we cultivate Drosera glanduligera in our cold greenhouse, where the seeds have been sown in May 2004 and germinate comparatively uniform in October. The species grows during the southern Australian winter and we are successful providing 2 to 8 degrees centigrade night and 15 to 25 degrees day temperature using a 400 watt metal vapor lamp additional to daylight. Actually, the seedlings die soon without nutrition, so we feed crushed fish food flocks. On this occasion becomes visible that also the normal inner tentacles bend relatively quick to the leaf center to enclose and digest the prey directly. Snap tentacles and run me away. Snap tentacles and run me away. For their small size, the plants may appear inconspicuous, 
but the speed of their marginal snap tentacles is a sensation and unique for the whole genus. For a better understanding, we take a look through our USB microscope and find a never described and simply unknown structure, as you can see here. The tip looks like a shortly stalked ball which lies on a threefold subdivided tentacle head. This is obviously the trigger for the snap mechanism. A side view shows that the tentacle is divided into a very slender upper and a clearly broader lower part, connected with a kind of articulation, where the snapping happens. It's interesting that the upper part breaks off exactly at the articulation if the needle causes lateral pressure. Such a breaking point would be simply impossible with a normal tentacle stalk. Let us take a look at the South American Drosera sessilifolia too. It is very similar to Drosera burmani and actually the snap tentacles of both species bend with the same speed. Even though all three species look very similar on a first glance, they appear distinct under the microscope. Drosera burmani shows clearly the largest snap tentacle heads. Despite a small difference in shape, the corresponding speed suggests the same function as Drosera sessilifolia. Drosera glanduligera is totally different and its hundredfold faster movement is obviously based on the effective modification of marginal snap tentacles. The Venus flytrap is also a member of the Droseraceae, the botanical sundew family. The closing of its snap trap is also triggered by sensory hairs which developed from Drosera tentacles and that applies also to the waterwheel plant Aldrovanda. Without any doubt, this rapid catching for prey by a plant is very amazing for everybody watching it for the first time. Snap, 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 and tackles. Snap, and tackles, and run the lights. Snap, and tackles, and run the lights. Snap, 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 and tackles. Comparing the speed of Dionea with Drosera glanduligera through video single pictures shows evenly matched opponents. The pictures are the 25th part of a second apart, so the movement during four pictures takes approximately 1.5 tenth of a second, surprisingly for both plants. The correspondence of trigger hairs and tentacles was described by Professor Stephen Williams in his lecture for the ICPS in Tokyo 2002. Here we can see what was discussed in some of the papers this morning, an endodermis. Now roots have an endodermis and now here's the trigger hair of the Venus flytrap. It shows that there's a, a, an endodermis here and that's obviously homologous with this endodermis. Uh, so that means that the stylus up here on the trigger hair is homologous with the gland cells and that the stalk cells are homologous with the podium here including, including the sensory cells which are right here in this notch. And so we can begin to see how it's related. And then really the Venus flytrap trigger hair is probably a highly <coughs> modified tent. Of course, a good reason to examine again the sundews in our collection. And actually, this caused us to contact several CP friends and to check the literature. First, we look into the classic book on Australian Drosera, Plants of Prey. And what we found, the fastest Drosera on Earth, is he described as 
A Common Red Flowering Sundew. And after this book, Drosera burmanii has very long glandular hairs on which we found no glands at all. Even our drawings show only mucilage tentacles like this Drosera occidentalis, another species with long marginal snap tentacles without glands. The book Carnivorous Plants of Australia says that Drosera glanduligera develops retentive glands at the upper margins, smaller glands within. And for Drosera occidentalis, retentive glands around the margin, smaller glands within. Exactly like for Drosera ericssoni, retentive glands around the margin, smaller glands within. So only an itself repeating standard sentence is used without mentioning the distinct structure of snap tentacles. Identical also for Drosera pulchella and other pygmy Droseras, developing round, scoop-like tentacle heads, carrying a kind of jelly pillow without any glands, which can be more or less inflated, depending on the leaf's age and condition. The microscope shows too that the lower part of the rapid moving tentacles is clearly broader and more powerful than the glue tentacles on the leaf surface. Proceeding to check the botanical literature for any relevant information, we find something in The Carnivorous Plants, the most scientific book these days. After all, the three authors know that several species exist which develop rapid moving glueless marginal tentacles. Putting them into one context concerning the evolution from Drosera tentacles to the snap trap of Dionaea. Talking about Drosera burmanii as the only example. Very interesting, but no more sentence or picture can be found about the tentacle structure or their occurrence within the genus. Two still open questions that we will clear within the next parts of this movie. Snap tentacles and run the lights. Snap tentacles and run the lights. Snap, snap, snap tentacles. Snap ten tackles and run me lights. Snap ten tackles and run me lights. Such a movement of glue tentacles is well known. However, the amazing snapshot of Drosera glanduligera that Richard Davian discovered is shown for the first time in detail on this DVD. All other tentacles in the genus need, depending on species and temperature, at least 5 to 25 seconds to bend in. Our investigations also show that the rapid tentacles of Drosera glanduligera seem to be closely related to those of Drosera section Lamprolepis, the botanical name for the pygmy sundews which develop hemisphere-shaped tentacle heads. Comparing these shapes within the section gave us the next surprise. The erect growing species, catching mainly flying insects, develop elongated marginal tentacles, but only with common mucilage-producing heads. Indeed, these species correspond with the literature. Only the typical basal rosettes develop snap tentacles to transport and fix prey into the glue, which also avoids the frequent theft by ants. That's wise, because even a movement within 7 seconds is quite ineffective from the point of view of winged insects. With flying prey, glue is much more effective. A real surprise! For the approximately 40 closely related species of section Lamprolepis, 
Obviously, the growing shape decides if the genes responsible for the development of snap tentacles are activated or not. That is exciting, but what kind of tentacles do we find within the other sections? Drosera hamiltoni, a typical basal rosette, grows in southern Australia, and again we find snap tentacles. The microscope shows round or oval heads, which is typical for the Australian Drosera, with the exception of two species. Therefore, we also recommend to correct the botanical description of the monotypic section Stelogyne. The Blue Mountains in southeastern Australia are one habitat of the forked sundews, which also grow in New Zealand. As can be expected, the big gluey traps catching mainly flying insects show no snap tentacles. We experience a big surprise when we looked at the seedlings, typical Australian snap tentacles. The first leaves of Drosera glanduligera develop only marginal glue tentacles. The second generation shows both glue and snap tentacles. Only leaves growing later show fully developed traps. It is the opposite case with the forked sundews of section Phycopsis. The seedling develops snap tentacles until the leaves start to become forked. Now the responsible genes are deactivated because they are not necessary for the big long stalked glue trap. Now we take a look at the tubus drosera in section Ergalium, which includes both basal rosettes and erect plants. Some of the climbing species grow to be longer than 2 meters and use their glute tentacles also to hold on to stones and other vegetation. Obviously adapted to flying insects, we find three different types of leaves. Butterfly, cup or bell-shaped. As can be expected, we found no snap tentacles. But we're amazed when Drosera macranta showed a suddenly quick movement of its marginal tentacles after I touched it accidentally with the macro lens. Naturally, we thereafter paid close attention to the basal rosettes, expecting to find more snap tentacles. Fortunately, we have a whole string of species in our collection, as you can see here. Snap and tackles and run me lights. Snap and tackles and run me lights. Snap, snap, snap and tackles. However, our search remained fruitless. Obviously, none of the approximately 40 species in section Ergalium develops snap tentacles. Now we change to the tropical northern Queensland, where we visited one of the oldest rainforests on Earth. Hang on! <laughs> Trevor Hennem guided us to the only known growing site of Drosera schizandra on Mount Bartlefrey. Adapted to the twilight within the forest, this sundew grows on a layer of rotting leaves. Despite being in the tropics, at this site, which is more than 700 meters above sea level, the noon temperature reaches barely 25 degrees centigrade. The prey consists mainly of minute midges and flies, which are caught by normal glue tentacles. The macro shots show without any doubt that this species develops no snap tentacles. Schizandra means divided 
and this name was given to the plant for its divided anthers. Altogether we know three closely related Queensland sundews. The second species is Drosera prolifera, which proliferates similar to strawberries with plantlets developing from laterally growing florist senses. Also here we find no snap tentacles. The third species is Drosera adelae, frequently found in CP collections because they grow very well in tanks with artificial light and living room temperatures. The leaves clearly show only glue tentacles. So then we check the whole section prolifera, but no member develops snap tentacles. This section was newly defined some 10 years ago. Before that, systematics assigned the Queensland Drosera to section Arachnopus, where we found only two more species today. Let's have a look at them. The Indian sundew is very common in tropical Australia, but it is also spread across Asia and down to South Africa. On our DVD, A Hunting Veggies Cocktail, we showed minute structures on the trapping leaves for the first time, which may look very distinct for different varieties. They only become visible under the microscope. However, we find no snap tentacles. Drosera hatmaiororum is the only species in the genus which develops bright yellow, clearly modified tentacles at the base of the lamina and at the florist sense. More on that later. At the moment we are only looking for the active prey-catching tentacles and these all produce mucilage. So in section Arachnopus we have no snap tentacles either. In tropical northern Australia we find approximately an additional 15 species assigned to section Lasiocephala. That means hairy heads. Actually, on the one hand these hairs reflect the intensive sunlight, on the other hand they collect condensing humidity which supports the perennial plants during the dry seasons. A symbiosis with capsid bugs is reported from diverse Drosera, but this species seems to be very much adapted to Drosera ordensis. Several plants in this section show rapid tentacle movement, but in all cases we found only mucilage producing tentacles. Drosera arcturi grows in the cool southern Australia and New Zealand. This species is considered to be very archaic and is assigned to its own monotypic section. Again we find no snap tentacles. The same applies to Drosera regia from South Africa, which literature describes as the oldest species in the genus. For its up to 50 cm long leaves, this living fossil is quite correctly called the Queen of Sundews. From Eastern Australia up to Japan we find Drosera spatulata, a typical basal rosette. Again literature does not mention any special marginal tentacles, but what we see here are certainly snap tentacles. And their heads are clearly different from the other Australian sundews. In Japan it meets Drosera rotundifolia and this results in a very fertile natural hybrid, which also develops snap tentacles. 
With these plants we arrive in section Drosera. More details on this and some first conclusions to our investigations can be found in part 3 of this film. Snap, snap, and tackles. Snap, and tackles, and run me lights. Snap, and tackles, and run me lights. Drosera rotundifolia grows in the northern hemisphere from Japan to Canada, often together with Drosera anglica and intermedia. Therefore, hybrids are not rare. Adapted to Arctic conditions, these perennial species have only a short growing season during summer. They all show the ability to develop dormant buds to survive even stronger frost. Here in Germany, the plants are remnant from the last glacial period and grow mainly in swamps higher than 600 to 800 meters. However, the frost should not be too heavy for Drosera filiformis, which grows down to the south of the USA. One matter can already be commented on in the meantime. No sundew of section Drosera developing dormant buds show snap tentacles and that applies to most of the northern hemisphere species. So we go back to the southern hemisphere and turn west. In Madagascar and southeast Africa, Drosera madagascariensis grows. An upright growing species with marginal tentacles that all produce mucilage. Arriving in southern Africa, we start with Drosera nidiformis, finding only glue tentacles. Also with Drosera capensis, which is very common in CP collections. We cannot find any snap tentacles, but this species is able to roll in prey very effectively with its long movable leaves. In the Cape region, interestingly enough, Drosera capensis and Drosera aliciae, another species which is widely spread in CP collections, produce a hybrid on which we already found snap tentacles 1994. <laughs> The clear development of snap tentacles with Drosera aliciae is a surprising fact for all CP enthusiasts to whom we mention it. The longish tentacle heads are clearly different from those of the round-shaped Australian species and resemble more those of Drosera spatulata. Our investigations show that this applies to most African Drosera showing snap tentacles. We found no reports on this in literature, but in our opinion it should be discussed. Drosera venusta shows upright set leaves, and just like the stem building species, it's not a typical basal rosette. But nevertheless, also the adult plants develop snap tentacles. As a whole, the African plants move more slowly than their Australian relatives, and they do not bend down to the lamina but remain at a 70 to 90 degree angle to the leaf margin. But then the whole leaf starts rolling in. A reason why snap tentacles have been overlooked for so long could be this effect. Filming the plant from above shows mostly only glue tentacles. Only if the camera is applied from below with a corrected focus, 
those tentacles become visible, which are partly bent beneath the leaf. It is another surprise that we find the upright growing Drosera cystiflora developing snap tentacles. Even more interesting, under the microscope, its tentacle heads are different from most other African species and look more like the typical Australians. So for the African species of section Drosera we find both kinds, with and without snap tentacles. Being anxious to see more, we go west again and arrive in South America. Starting with the attractive Drosera villosa, which is also common in private CP collections, we find only glue tentacles. However, this is totally another story with Drosera pumila. To our particular delight, we find snap tentacles, which are not rectangular, but narrowed down towards the tentacle stalk. Also Drosera montana develops marginal tentacles and again a magnification shows a head shape which narrows towards the stalk. That becomes even clearer under the microscope. Unfortunately we had no more species available but then we received an email with two more informative plant pictures from Barry Rice. Good evening. <laughs> the species is Drosera capillaris, which grows in North and South America. Zooming into the pictures, we clearly find snap tentacles, and their head shape again narrows towards the stalk. Now we examined all plants which were available to us, so that we can start to accumulate the facts for a first hypothesis, describing the evolution of the genus Drosera. To start this, we go back into the past some 200 million years. Only one supercontinent called Pangaea exists, where archaic plants have been growing since 140 million years. But 180 million years ago, Pangaea broke apart into the northern continent Laurasia and the southern continent Gondwana, which causes huge changes in climate. During that time, particular plants discover that the arthropods, which used to crawl around on their leaves, are rather good to use for sexual reproduction and so the first flowers develop. When this worked, some of the flowering plants growing on poor soil also noticed that arthropods are actually tasty protein packs which can be caught and digested with glue and pitcher traps. So within the botanical order Nebentales, the first archaic sundews developed and probably also the ancestors of our present Nepenthes. About 140 million years ago, the true ants appeared and caused some kind of revolution for all organisms living directly on the soil. As we observe even today, ants are stealing the prey out of the sundew glue traps. To reduce that serious theft, a Drosera species living in Gondwana, probably in the region where Australia, Africa, South America and Antarctica built one mainland, develops snap tentacles to hold on to prey effectively. A further development of this is the related Venus flytrap, which also avoids theft very effectively when the leaves snap shut. So the modern sundews must have grown there more than 120 to 130 million years ago, because now Gondwana starts to break apart too, and the resulting oceans isolate the plants on the new formed continents. Even 80 million years ago, the distance between the continents was large and until today the species developed independently, as did the shapes of the snap tentacle heads. Australia, with more than 100 sundew species, is certainly a center of the genus. Here we find mainly the round to slightly oval shapes and the unique snap mechanism of Drosera glanduligera. In Africa, the longish, 
nearly rectangular shape is dominant, while the typical Americans show heads with a more triangular structure. The old-fashioned Drosera Arcturi, Regia, as well as the Queensland Sundews, survived even without any snap tentacles, and derived probably directly from the archaic species. How the other species are related, well, that's up to our specialists in systematics. So now we have reached the end of our time trip, but not the end of this film. We have some more interesting observations on the genus Drosera in the fourth part. Up to now we examined where snap tentacles are developed in the genus Drosera and how their shapes differ from one another. Now we show more characteristics which become obvious if we take a closer look at the annual plants assigned to the sections Arachnopus, Coelophila and Telocalyx. For survival, every generation of these species must complete a full cycle within one growing period, from germination, overflowering, to the production of ripe seeds, because the plants die at the end of the season. Due to that stress, the strategies for prey catching need to be permanently optimized. Actually, even the seedlings of Drosera glanduligera and of the two Arachnopus species die soon if no prey is caught. How sensitive these plants react to stress caused by differing environmental conditions indicates their marked tendency to develop pygmy forms if disturbed. That means even very small plants suddenly stop their normal growth and begin to develop flowers which are even able to produce germinable seeds. It is certainly no coincidence that especially these annual species show very ingenious strategies to catch prey. Drosera burmanii and Cecilifolia develop the most eye-catching and therefore well-known snap tentacles. Drosera glanduligera, which faces a very short and cool growing season, developed the fastest snap mechanism of the genus. Drosera indica grows up quickly to an impressive size and we still need to make a detailed clarification of the sense of the diverse microscopic structures which we find on its leaf surface. Actually, our examination of the bright yellow tentacles of Drosera hartmeierorum led meanwhile to a surprising result. The first pictures of that phenomenon can already be seen on our DVD A Hunting Veggies Cocktail, made 2004. Since Dr. Jan Schlauer described Drosera hartmeierorum in the year 2001, several attempts have been made to clarify the function of its yellow emergencies, which, until now, are only known from this tropical sundew from northern Australia. For that purpose, you need strong magnifications. We took some of the meanwhile available pictures and combined them for a camera drive into the microcosm. That shows surprising details. The mulberry-like heads consist of transparent, hollow giant cells from which every single lens is directed on the yellow inner center, thus strongly intensifying its color. Here the scanning electron microscope shows a collapsed giant cell, clearly indicating the hollow structure. Actually with this technique the surface is covered with metal atoms so the transparency of the lenses remains invisible. If you let the emergencies dry up for some days, the light microscope shows clearly that the shriveling but transparent cell walls differ from the bright yellow center. Up to now, none of the discussions on the sense of these modified tentacles mention the fact that these are not only found on the trapping leaves, 
but also on the florist scents, where they appear in contrast on dark red sickle-shaped bracts. If we follow the florist scents from above down to the plant, we find them in almost regular intervals, but no longer on the last 10 to 12 cm down to the trapping leaves. Looking at several flower stalks, it becomes clear that the bright shining yellow tentacles with the dark red bracts at the background become a real light chain, especially for the eyes of insects, as their visible spectrum is shifted into the short wave range. For insects, the dark red appears only as an almost black background, which highlights the bright tentacle heads all the more. Actually, that applies also for the yellow tentacles in the center of the remarkable red plants. Tests using a torch show that the lens structure of these modified tentacle heads actually collect the light very effectively, preferably reflecting its yellow component. So if the sun is shining, the light chain on the fluorescence appears just like the runway lights of an airport to insects. But how nasty! The runway lights end some 10 to 12 centimeters above the plant, from where the landed insect is now looking directly at the bundles of shining tentacles in the dark red plant center beneath. But in contrast to the fluorescence, if landing in the middle of the plant, the insect inevitably becomes a victim of the dense glue tentacles. Actually, an amazing effective strategy. Our investigations show that within the genus, the annual sundews rank in first place with regard to adaption and optimization of their strategies for prey catching. In addition, all information on the tentacle modifications are obviously stored in a dominant gene, because it passes the characteristics on even if the plant crossbreeds with species lacking that particular modification. This is confirmed by the hybrids shown in this film. Unfortunately, we have not been successful in proving this for the reflecting tentacles of Drosera hartmeyerorum because this species does not crossbreed with the related Drosera indica. So we could not produce any hybrid. Actually, this topic is certainly not finalized. Not only should the listing of those sundews which produce snap tentacles be completed, but also an examination of numerous seedlings has still to be effected. Are there even more tentacle shapes which we did not notice? And what is the purpose of the microscopic structures on the leaves of Drosera indica? Obviously, on examination of the snap tentacles and runway lights of genus Drosera, we not only found answers, but also many new questions cropped up. That excites us, of course, because the topic therefore remains of further interest for the future. Snap, 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 and tackles. Snap and tackle then run me wise. Snap and tackle then run me wise. Snap, snap, snap and tackle. Action. Welcome to our new Hunting Veggies DVD. This time we show you the world largest Nepenthes nursery, Borneo Exotics, in Sri Lanka. Hunting VGs featuring Borneo Exotics. Hunting VGs featuring Borneo Exotics. Action. The filming starts at the hot and humid lowland greenhouses near the capital Colombo, 
were also a sterile laboratory for the artificial propagation by tissue culture exists. For this time, Irmgard and myself are lodging at Mount Lavinia. After a successful week, we move to the Grand Hotel in Euralia, where we continue the filming at the nearby Highland Production Nurseries. Robert Kentley, an experienced Nepenthes expert and the founder of Borneo Exotics himself, guides us through the numerous greenhouses with many beautiful species, from which some are even for the first time shown on video. During an interview with Rob, we learn more about his famous company. Ladies and gentlemen, today we visit the Highland Nurseries of Borneo Exotics and I'm very pleased to introduce Mr. Robert Cantley to you. Rob, you are the owner of Borneo Exotics. Can you tell us something about your company? Thank you, Ziggy. Um, yes, Borneo Exotics is a nursery based in Sri Lanka and we grow mostly Nepenthes, which are tropical pitcher plants. And it's really the result of 25 years of work um, so I consider it more of a concept than a business. When I first read something about a nursery uh, growing Nepenthes, it was called Isra Exotics. Do you have something to do with Isra Exotics? Indeed, Ziggy, yes. Um, in the 1980s, I started a small nursery in Brunei, mm -hmm. which we wanted to call Borneo Exotics, but the uh, laws in Brunei would not permit that. So we had to call it something else, and uh, my local partner chose the name Isra Exotics. However, I always liked the name Borneo Exotics, so when we came to Sri Lanka, I took the opportunity to start this new company and call it Borneo Exotics. Which I think is only logical because many of the plants we see here are origin from Borneo. This is true. Borneo is truly the epicenter of the distribution of Nepenthes, and uh, that is another possible reason for the name Borneo Exotics. But it's really because, Ziggy, we started in Borneo in the 1980s and uh, my heart still lies with that beautiful island as well. There are just under 40 people now working uh, in Borneo Exotics in the lowland and highland nurseries and the tissue culture lab. Uh, I am not a trained horticulturalist. I'm actually an electronics engineer by profession and Diana is a teacher. So we both are self-taught and really by many years of experience have learned how to grow these plants and the individual requirements of the different species. Actually, the beautiful and healthy plants confirm that Robert Cantley knows very well how to grow Nepenthes. 2004, the plants of Borneo Exotics received even a gold medal by the Honorable Royal Horticultural Society. We've arranged some Nepenthes ampullaria here for you, just to show you the difference in colour forms. There are many different forms. This is a typical speckled form, which has a beautiful basal rosette. And here we have a pure green form, also with a basal rosette. Until very recently, these were the only two colour forms known in cultivation. And then in the mid-1980s, I was fortunate enough to discover this one in the jungles of Brunei which is color inverted. It's basically red with green speckles. Uh, this is extremely rare both in, in the wild and in cultivation as it's only propagated from cuttings. And more recently we've managed to isolate some other types such as this form here. Um, this is a, a red form with purple speckles and green speckles. So for now we're calling this one Nepenthes ampullaria tricolor. And this one here which is a pure red picture uh, with very little green speckling. Are you filming the filming? Yes. <laughs> the making of. <laughs> uh, 
And this is Nepenthes bicalcarata.